Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to my channel, the Cosmic Keys Podcast. This is going to be your weekly astrology forecast for the week of October 3rd to October 9th, 2022. It's crazy that we're already in early October and it's crazy how fast everything is building up. Um, this week in particular, it's not the most active week. But to me, it's just kind of crazy that we're already here. We're already in October. We're, I mean, early October. We're already at the uh, full moon in Aries, which is the full moon of Libra season. And <clears throat> the, the, I mean, the crazy thing is just Q4 of 2022, which is what we're in. We've just all been hyping it up. All of us astrologers have been hyping it up. A lot of economists maybe have been hyping it up. And from the beginning, you know, um, if you watch Pluto Pilled on my Rockfin channel, you'll see that me, Cam, and SJ have really been hyping up this time of the year. And, you know, astrology aside, <clears throat> we're not in the crazy part of the season yet. The crazy part of the season really begins at the end of this month when Scorpio season begins. We get the two eclipses, Saturn goes direct, Mars goes retrograde. And yeah, the two eclipses occur. One of them, the second of the two is occurring on the midterm election day. But astrology aside, you know, we were kind of saying that the astrology of the beginning of this month would be kind of OK, pretty good. You know, Venus is in her home sign of Libra. Mercury is now direct at the time that I record stationing direct in Mercury's home sign of Virgo. And um, things are pretty good in early October, but, um, you know, astro like, like I keep saying, astrology aside, I'm seeing a lot of kind of scary, freaky news headlines, Twitter chatter, Twitter rumors, and um, it really seems like stuff is <clears throat> going down um, just the way we were kind of predicting that it would. I mean, in red, like looking back at last week i think it was just this last week that the nord stream one and two um gas pipeline got <laughs> destroyed or uh blown up or whatever um that's definitely a kind of like that's going to definitely have an effect on um europeans abilities to heat their homes this winter Gas in general this winter is going to be going up in price. I already got had somebody from the energy company knock on my door and say, hey, your gas is going to be a lot more expensive this winter. Use it during this time of the day to get a lower rate, blah, blah, blah. The pound, the British pound has also crashed. Um, the US dollar at the moment is you know, doing really well compared to a lot of other currencies. Um, but I'm getting a lot of deja vu of 2008. Um, when the 2008 crash occurred around this time, Libra season. And yeah, like last week was the first week of Libra season. Um, there was a lot of good, you know, on my, uh, there was a lot of good things to reflect on in my personal life. But when I look at the headlines, when I look at Twitter, which is my main news source, I'm seeing really hectic, crazy stuff. Um, and it, you know, when I talk to average people, nobody seems to really be aware of any of this stuff. Um, nobody is really worried about it or, um, you know, thinking about it the way I am at the moment, but, um, yeah, I just want everybody to, I just want to reinforce what I've been saying for a while, you know, um, think like a prepper right now. We're entering the dark winter. There's been talk about dark winter, dark winter, dark winter, you know, on a very basic level, it's going to be more expensive to heat all of our homes. If you're in a cold climate, wherever we are, just because the demand for natural gas is going to be very high. But if you're actually in a European country, um, it's looking very bleak. And, you know, I'm kind of just rambling, but what I'm getting at is um, 
just by looking at the news events of this past week and looking at what's kind of been going on this past week, a lot of my um, suspicions about this time of the year seem to be coming true. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's better to have um, a prepped, you know, a prepared point of view as we're entering this time of the year. But it's really, like I said, going to be during Scorpio season that I think it's going to become common knowledge that like we're in what we're in. And us astrologers, us forecasters, us people who are paying attention to geopolitical things and economic things are already seeing it. And, you know, I've seen some rumors flying around on Twitter. I see a lot of stuff. I, I hate to just be like Twitter gossiping at the moment, but... Because like, you know, let's talk about September 24th. Nothing happened then, but Twitter was talking about that a lot. I'm seeing things that are like, oh, crazy news is going to break this week. Like the week that I'm talking about, October 3rd. Big scandals, big name people, big big things are supposedly going to be released. And I take that with a grain of salt. It's more the economic stuff. It's more that the, the British pound has crashed. It's more that natural gas is going to really shoot through the roof in demand. And the main thing is the astrology, though. The main thing is that, you know, since, since you know, 2020, since the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in January of 2020, since the new, um, you know, the, the Star of Bethlehem date in the December of 2020 that is really kicking us off into like a new era a new triplicity element of the air element where the Saturn Jupiter conjunctions take place. And just all of this stuff, the, literally the great reset, the Klaus Schwab book that's published the world economic forum, people who are telling us what they're doing, the world economic forum, people who are telling us that the same people who complied with the COVID restrictions will comply to climate change restrictions and social credit score and, digital currency and cbdc's so again like it's kind of my job to be dwelling in this doomy gloomy space it's my job to be looking at the the, the forecasting of the stars and the planets and um j i'm just saying get ready mentally prepare yourself for the dark winter right now is what i'm saying things are pretty great i mean like things are pretty okay the people around me are pretty okay the the energy in my everyday life is pretty okay. But if you're paying attention to the like news, like the unfiltered news, there's a lot of reasons to be concerned right now. And I'm just pointing that out, that it's kind of on time with what us astrologers have been talking about. So that aside, this week in particular, October 3rd to October 9th, it's a pretty basic week. There's actually no planetary um aspects between planets to report on my freaking computer just went blank um there's nothing to really report on in terms of um planetary uh transits or or alignments um and i'm frustrated now i'm standing here in my astro computer just went blank um but with that being said like i said uh last week just to recap um venus entered libra mercury station direct so i just want to see if the chart will even show up and nope it just disappeared well mercury as i am speaking is actually uh, stationing and I'm just like having tech problems. I might just not even have a chart this week, which isn't the, the worst thing. Um, Cause there's, like I said, there's not a lot to report this week. So yeah, pretty much all the aspects that I will report on are just going to be related to the moon. The moon is starting the week off in Capricorn and then um, it goes full at the very end of the week. We're going to have our full moon in Aries. So throughout the entire week, all of the aspects that are on my calendar dates here are just going to be um, 
related to the moon. And I don't have a chart to show during this recording because this computer of mine literally just went blank. It's like not tur even turning on now. Um, but with that being said, the other, the other thing to note that's happening this week is just that Pluto is station, stationing direct. I think it's on Friday. Boom, 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 boom. No, Saturday. So Pluto stations direct on Saturday. And again, Pluto has been hovering around the eclipse point. Not the eclipse point, the Pluto return, NATO US Pluto return point. Um, and this ding dong computer, <laughs> as I'm streaming, just gotta love it, y'all. Um, but yeah, let's just talk about uh, Monday, October 3rd. So we start the week off with the moon in Capricorn here. Um, and, you know, this week when we're thinking of just about the moon, because that's really the only thing to focus on at the moment, um, the moon is moving through Saturn ruled signs. So that just means, you know, we this week does bring kind of like a stoic attitude, let's say, about the state of things. Um, so we kick the week off with the moon in Capricorn and Sunday the second, the day that Mercury stationed direct was actually the um, first quarter moon. So we're halfway through um, the lunar cycle, halfway at the beginning of the week to the full moon in Aries, which is going to take place on Sunday at the end of the week. Um, so kind of as my computer finally boots back up. So as the um, moon, you know, Monday, as we kick things off on Monday, um, moon moving through Capricorn. So that's kind of like a stoic, serious mood. And I'm already feeling the serious mood because the moon is in Capricorn as I speak and as I put uh, my computer back on line. And last week, a big thing that I did notice too was that um, Saturn and Mars were in a tr an air trine with each other. So I think it was at 18 degrees of Aquarius and Gemini, the moon, or I'm sorry, Mars is in Gemini at 18 degrees and Saturn is in Aquarius at 18 degrees. And Saturn is going to be stationing direct at the end of this month. And then really it's going to go all the way forward through Aquarius until it enters Pisces in March of 2023. And March of 2023 is the big turning point that, you know, all of us astrologers are really focusing on. Um, and it's crazy to think about just where Saturn has brought us through this time. It, you know, Saturn moving through Aquarius, it entered Aquarius for the first time in 2020 when the idea of social distancing began. And all of this kind of like for the greater good social distancing, you know, locking people down restriction restrictions for the greater good for all of these things um occurred when saturn entered aquarius in 2020 and so really when we're thinking about you know the long-term astrology of the rest of the year Octo late october is the starting point of the journey into something new and then we don't really arrive at something new until march of 2020 that's when Pluto enters Aquarius. That's when Mars leaves Gemini after being there for eight months. That's when Saturn enters Pisces. And so um, with all of that, I just want to have a fucking chart to show you guys. And I'm like looking at the other screen. But with all that being said, um, to go back to what I was originally talking about, Mars and Saturn are still kind of close together in a trine at the moment. And I noticed that big time last week, like I'm working on the 2023 calendar and I just like got all of it done. All of the um, graphic design of the actual astrology done last week. And I was just like hustling through it. I even, and, and the reason I bring this up too, I was so like motivated and so busy because Mars is your energy and Saturn is con compressing it 
or kind of like putting a focus on it or kind of bottling up that energy. Um, and when I kind of had that motivation last week and was so productive, I even went to the gym in the middle of it and even kind I, I, this is proof that I'm getting old, but I kind of like pulled something at the gym. So be really careful with, with, with physical activity during, I mean, during the next few months until March of 2023 as well, because this is like as Saturn and Mars, um, you know, as Saturn will eventually station direct, Mars will station retrograde and then go direct. There's going to be three total hits of this um, Mars Saturn trine. And I already like I, I'm glad to report that I felt very productive during the Mars Saturn trine of last week. Um, but it was also a little bit of overexertion because it was kind of like I went to the gym got really sore in a weird way. I, it was like doing the lat pull downs and my like side body was real sore. And then I just went to the gym and I was just carrying like a heavy weight. Wasn't even lifting at the time. I was just carrying it to lift and just did like a weird angle and like pulled something kind of bad. And full disclosure, the, the I had a big injury in my past that, um, that was very life changing. And that was also during a Mars retrograde in Gemini. So the last time that that happened was 2008, actually. And I'm just going to put this out there, like, be really careful with safety, be really careful with like fitness stuff during these next few months. I mean, the like I said, shit is going down right now. Um, and I'm just putting this out there just to avoid injury. And I was just kind of filling time because look, now I have my fucking chart back up again. See, I'm, I'm a little jacked up, y'all. So let's just show the chart now that my computer booted back up. Um, we're talking about M Monday. Um, as you can see on Monday, the moon is in Capricorn early week. And even on Monday... Saturn is at 18 degrees of Aquarius and Mars is at 21 degrees of Gemini and Mars stations later in the month. And then, you know, doesn't leave Gemini until March of 2023. But this is what I was talking about. Mars being the action planet, the warrior planet and Saturn being the restrictive, compressive a uh, patient planet of responsibilities and limitations. And when you put limitation to your warrior energy to your masculine energy it can really lead to productivity so again think about even though this aspect is separating it's going to happen two more times during this year um and it's definitely worth you know tapping into um even just looking at the the chart in general Jupiter is getting ready to kind of move back into Pisces, and that's also going to happen at the end of this month. So Jupiter's at two degrees of Aries at the beginning of the week. Mercury is stationed direct now at 24 degrees Virgo. So this is also a good week where Mercury's in its home sign at 24 degrees Virgo. Venus is in her home sign of Libra at five degrees Libra. Um, so these are two strong planets in their, in their home signs take advantage of both of them this week. Um, and in line with what I was talking about with Saturn, again, the moon is moving from Capricorn to uh, Aquarius in the beginning of the week. So that's Saturn ruled moons for the beginning of the week. But just to finally get back to what I was originally talking about, Monday the 3rd, uh, the moon trines the North Node and Uranus early in the morning. That's kind of that Taurus activation through the earth element trine then the moon trines mercury at 8 58 p.m and then it conjuncts pluto late on monday evening so we're kicking the week off again this is the time of the month where the moon moves through saturn ruled signs it's a time to be serious it's a time to be kind of practical and productive you can still tap into that productivity of the mars trining saturn um and have that stoic prepper attitude because guys, I'm telling you, shit is going down this fall. It already is happening. Um, I'm I'm literally thinking about like shorting 
the market, like literally shorting, expecting the market to drop. And, and I'm thinking about <laughs> my mind is literally thinking about how to um, profit from like economic collapse or, or stock market crashes or whatever. I'm not saying I'm not claiming to be an expert in this, but based on what I see and based on the stars, first and foremost, there's shit that's going down. So Tuesday, the fourth, um, early in the morning, the moon will sextile Jupiter, kind of giving you like a chill um, optimism to kick the morning off. The moon enters Aquarius before that. So we're shifting to the fixed sign position where the moon will interact again with the, on the fixed sign axis, which is a little harder these days. It trines Venus at 6.03 p.m. So tap into the strong Venus and Libra relationship energy. Again, with Mercury being in its home sign, that's the mental planet. And with Merc or with Venus being in her home sign, that's the relationship, aesthetics, beauty, pleasure planet. <laughs> um, these are two good places for these two topics of life to focus on. So before shit really hits the fan this fall, tap into the relationships, check in on your relationships, do the work for your relationships, and tap into your mental, mental space. Um churn out some ideas now that the mercury retrograde is over um and that's really it on tuesday so by wednesday um the sun will try the moon very early wednesday morning um and then from basically 7 16 a.m until 1 59 p.m the moon activates those three kind of difficult parts that are in the fixed signs which is it squares the north node at 7 16 a.m squares Uranus at 1257 p.m. and then conjuncts Saturn at 159 p.m. all on Wednesday. And that's kind of just a time, you know, with Saturn or with the moon being in a Saturn ruled sign, Aquarius, um, you know, North Node, Uranus and Saturn activations as it moves through Aquarius are just kind of every time that happens every week, whenever the moon moves through the fixed sign during it's during each week, that's kind of more of the hard day in general from a lunar perspective. And then it trines Mars at 6 45 PM. So Wednesday, you know, embrace it's going to be the peak embracement of that stoic energy that I'm talking about. Cause Saturn brings the stoic energy and stoicism is just, you know, being kind of hardened and being um, accepting things as they are as bad. Like, I need to read some stoic philosophy ASAP. I, re I was about to buy a, Mar a Marcus Aurelius book, but Marcus Aurelius was like one of the stoic philosophers and he was uh, a Roman emperor, I think. Um, thanks, Jasmine on Rockfin for saying, always enjoy your forecast. Good luck with the tech issues. Oh, and thanks for the tip too. And again, the, the, these forecasts go out straight to Rockfin. As just a side note, um, as things in my life change, I, I'm not saying I'm going to go fully on Rockfin, but Rockfin is definitely more of my focus these days because I am getting the support. I am getting new subscribers to it. I get to put shows like Pluto Pilled and Speakeasy on there that are uncensored and I don't have to worry about the mainstream platforms. So thanks to everyone who's on Rockfin and check it out. Um, but yeah, Wednesday, kind of like the peak stoic part of the week. Um, and on Thursday, so I, I lied. I opened this forecast saying there are no planetary aspects this week. But there actually is one on Thursday. So I'll show the chart for this. And the aspect that I'm talking about is Mercury in Virgo trining Pluto in Capricorn. And that happens late on Thursday when the moon is finally in Pisces. So Thursday is the shift. It's the shift of the moon leaving the Saturn ruled signs. It's getting us into the weekend and what comes after Pisces is Aries and that's the full moon. That's the full moon of Libra season. So the beginning of the week is just more serious. It's a little bit more um, from an emotional point of view, from a personal point of view. Just think about being more productive and um, stoic and serious in the beginning of the week. And then, th you know, starting Thursday, it the moon goes into into Pisces which is more dreamy 
it's more uh, philosophical. It's Jupiter ruled moon. And as that's happening, Mercury trines with Pluto. So I'll show it on the chart here. Um, I'm going to fast forward to Thursday. And it's going to be later at night that this happens. But this is honestly, well, it, it, ha it, it we've kind of been feeling Mercury trine Pluto this entire time during the Mercury retrograde because Mercury stationed at 24 um, Virgo and Pluto is very solidly stationing direct at 26 Capricorn. So yeah, it's happening um, late. What time? I need to pull this back up. It officially happens at 11.55 PM Eastern on Thursday. But um, as you can see in the chart, Mercury is slowly moving forward from being retrograde in Virgo. You know, the Mercury this, this season stationed retrograde in um, Libra, retrograded back into Virgo, trined Pluto once. And then when it was still within only about two degrees of a trine, it's stationed direct. So this is really not new energy. Um, it's just a peak of the energy that we've already been feeling. And Pluto, you know, watch my show, Pluto Pilled. Pluto is hidden power, hidden corruption, um, death and rebirth, destruction, destruction of old systems, destruction of your ego in many ways. People that have Pluto affecting their personal planets have a very intense, obsessive and destructive nature to whatever inner planet it's affecting. In my case, it's just my ascendant sun and moon and Venus are all hit by Pluto. So I am Mr. Pluto. Talk to me about Pluto. Ask me about my pronouns. I mean, ask me about P Pluto. Um, and yeah, that it officially is on um, Thursday night that Mercury goes back into this. But it's interesting. Pluto is stationing direct and this Pluto is going direct officially on Saturday. And with Pluto being such a far out planet, I mean, it's literally as far out into the solar system as we can get. It's a modern astrological planet. So like, it's not a part of the traditional scheme of astrology. The traditional scheme of astrology is based on the seven visible planets that you can see with the naked eye. Modern astrology incorporates Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune, which were later discovered via telescopes, but we still can track their movement and we can still gather symbolic meaning about them. And even though Pluto is, you know, demoted to just being a dwarf planet because it moves so slow and because it's like that far out, modern astrologers are incorporating its symbolism. And I, I find Pluto very easy to recognize even though it's small, even though it's far, it doesn't mean it doesn't um, correspond with things going on down here on Earth. So that's happening Thursday as the moon is in Pisces. And again, Pluto is death and rebirth. It's intensity. It's obsession. Mercury is your mind and your mental space. Friday, moon is still in Pisces. So we're still in the dreamy, creative water element, Jupiter ruled sign. Um, it sextiles the node in Uranus, not a huge deal. And then late on Friday night, uh, the moon squares Mars. So the moon in Pisces squares Mars and Gemini um, at 1040 PM Eastern on Friday. So watch out for like little conflicts watch out for feelings being hurt friday just you know mars is the conflict planet the planet of war moon is your emotions so at 10 40 p.m when the moon squares mars watch out for that and i'll just show on the chart once more when that happens on friday night it's gonna be at 22 degrees so mars is at 22 degrees and the moon is at 22 degrees Mars is actually very close to squaring Neptune as well at this point. So this is, again, 
one of three hits that Mars during its retrograde period will go through. So Mars is still direct at this point. It's just trying to Saturn last week. Um, you know, it still kind of is tr trining Saturn within four degrees. It's weaker at this point by the end of the week. But all of this week, again, be productive. Um, Mars trying Saturn is fading. But even when it was peak, it was almost too much. Like I kind of freaking pulled a muscle or something at the gym. Um, but to go back to the beginning of the week, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is a good time to be real serious and real productive. But um, Mars Neptune is also coming close to an aspect. And then as I pull the calendar back up on Saturday, the moon um, conjuncts Neptune at that moment too. So with the moon in Pisces, uh, Friday into early Saturday, you know, it's coming right up to its square. It's activating the, the Neptune Mars square. So this, you know, Mars is the planet of war. Mars is the planet of conflict. It could, and, and Neptune is the far out spiritual planet of dreams, the astral, the psychedelic, the imaginary. It's a very, you know, dissolving, ungrounded outer planet. So there could be confusion related to conflict, confusion related to, you know, your personal will, your personal energy, which is Mars. And when the moon comes right up to that square, it does activate that. So again, I'll show you on the actual chart. This is happening Friday into Saturday night. The moon is right next to Neptune up here, and it's making that hard right angle to Mars in Gemini, which is right there. Um, so keep that in mind. Then the moon will move forward to oppose Mercury um, at 7.10 a.m. And then at 11.56 a.m., um, the moon enters Aries, which is going to be the full moon point. So again, this whole weekend is a full moon weekend. And the full moon period really begins Saturday morning when the moon enters Aries. Um, and on Saturday, you know, as the moon enters Aries, it's it, it's moving through early Aries. So it comes right up next to Jupiter, which is a good part of the month when uh, like the the optimism of Jupiter, as we can see here, when the moon gets to two degrees of Aries, that's giving you the fired up optimism in the emotional space. Um, by this point, as we can see here, opposite of Aries is Libra and the Venus and the sun are kind of riding next to each other. At this point on Saturday, Venus is at 11 degrees and the sun is at 15 degrees. And that's, you know, um, nine degrees away from moon Jupiter. So it's not quite activated, but as we move forward, it won't be until Sunday. I'm just going to bring the actual calendar back up. It won't be till Sunday that obviously the moon is opposite the sun. And that's what a full moon is. Um, and officially Pluto, that very far out planet that's way the heck out there, stations direct at 26 degrees Capricorn at 5.55 p.m. Eastern. So that's, you know, these far out planets go direct in retrograde kind of often. And Pluto is going to make its third official hit to the U.S. natal Pluto in December. So just a refresher, the U.S. Pluto return is when Pluto, this far out planet, comes all the way through the zodiac, a long loop until it comes back to where it was 250 some years later. Um, and that's, you have to be, the natal chart in question in order for it to have a Pluto return needs to be that old. So it can't, humans can't have Pluto returns, but countries can. So like a Saturn return, it's when Saturn takes 27 years to come back to where it was at your natal birth 
and then you have a confrontation with Saturn, which is the planet of restriction and responsibilities. It's like old father time. Oh no. Oh no. Saturn's here. I've got to get my life together. I'm getting old. That happens to us as humans, as nations, Pluto makes that even longer loop. And Pluto isn't the planet of Pluto is different than Saturn. Pluto is destruction. It's hidden corruption. It's obsession on a, like on a personal natal chart, it's obsession and it's transformation. So it is a wrecking ball. So if a country, the United States is having its U S Pluto return, it technically began in 2008 when Pluto entered Capricorn and look what happened in 2008, the economy crashed. Then it slowly moved all the way through and look what's happened to the United States culture. It's woke and retarded. Okay. It's we're, we're in like the end days of an empire. Um, we're not in, we're not, it doesn't feel like we're going to survive this. And so what's that? What is that saying? It's saying that the United States is getting destroyed at the moment. It's been getting destroyed since 2008. And the official pinpoints hit for the first time this February. Then it's then Pluto stationed retrograde and it hit a second time in July. Now it's stationing direct. It's going to hit a third time in the end of December. And um, Pluto leaves Capricorn in March of 2023. Again, that's why I'm pointing out March of 2023 is a big deal. But now that Pluto is stationing direct, um, it's going to get ready for its third boom, its third wrecking ball slam at the United States. That's going to be by December. And, you know, it's these are far out planets that that do their work in very slow, drawn out, slow drip, slow burn types of way. And so all I'm saying is that we're in that death and rebirth process of the United States, like powers that be or forces that are, you know, just part of the universe want to evolve whatever this thing known as the United States is. And um, we've been going through it. I mean, I'm, I'm just a fucking psycho, apparently paying attention to all of these dark, doomy, gloomy things. And when I tell my normie friends about it, they don't want to hear it at all. And maybe some of you don't want to hear it at all. So just disregard it. But my job as the astrologer is to talk about these long-term cycles and we're in it. Like look around you, look at the state of things. Uh, that is what the U S Pluto return is. And that's what we're going through right now. So all I'm saying is from just in general, I keep reiterating it over and over and over again. Fall of 2022 has been on every astrologer's radar for a long time. And um, really 2008 until 2023 is this U.S. Pluto return thing. I don't know if you hear a puppy crying in the background, but there's a puppy upstairs. And... Um, yeah, just get ready for that, for that is all I'm saying, I guess. Um, and we'll be fine. You know, this happens throughout history. Take every day, one day at a time, just deal with it. It's I'm not like depressed about this. OK, I'm, I'm just talking. I'm just trying to trying as a simple human to conceptualize big chunks of time and where we're at in these big cycles of time and, you know, all of that. And I'm just I'm just telling the you guys the news. Don't shoot the messenger. So Saturday continues the U.S. Pluto return with Pluto stationing direct. Um, and again, it's still, as I show in my chart on Saturday, it's still trining Mercury pretty close. Uh, well, it's within two degrees. So Mercury is moving faster at this point. And uh, now when we get to the end of the week... This is way longer of a forecast than I thought. Um, end of the week is the full moon at 16 degrees Aries. So in the morning, the moon in Aries will be opposite Venus at 1019 a.m. And then it won't be till 454 p.m. that the moon goes full. So let's look at it. It's a pretty straightforward full moon from what I can tell. Um, again... This is on the axis of Libra and Aries, which is in the wheel of the year, the axis between the first day of fall, which is Libra, and the first day of spring, which is Aries. 
first day of fall is ruled by Venus, the love planet. The first day of spring is ruled by Mars, the warrior planet. So this is, uh, this, the moon is ruled by Mars and the sun moon opposition when they're exactly opposite each other is what a full moon is. Um, so as we can see, I wanted to make it super tight, super exact. So it's at 454. Um, I'm going to just bump it to the minute and we'll look at what the chart shows. Um, so yeah, it's like this, it's within three degrees of being opposite Venus. And even at this point, Jupiter's already at one degree of Aries. So Jupiter is still in the Aries sign. So it's a sign based activation. You know, it's pretty far away. Jupiter's at one degrees and the moon is at 16 degrees. I don't like talking about the asteroid Chiron, but I happen to have Chiron on my chart right now. So for you Chiron people, Chiron is right next to this full moon. Chiron is an asteroid. So kind of like a kind of like the other outer planets which were only discovered via telescope. Chiron is an a uh, modern centaur asteroid that astrologers point out. And Chiron in this chart is at 14 degrees Aries, right next to the full moon. Uh, if you're going to acknowledge Chiron, this might be the time to do it, I guess, because like it's still just an asteroid. So I'm not super concerned with it. But Chiron, they say, represents uh, the wounded healer. And so. Um, it's really this opposition you see here where Venus is right next to the sun within three degrees. Venus is at 13. The sun is at 16. The moon is at 16. Chiron's at 14. And Jupiter's all the way at one. And then what else? It's kind of, The moon is in a wide six degrees sextile with Mars and Gemini here. Uh, the moon in Aries at 16 kind of sextiling Mars and Gemini at 22. Um, it's also kind of sextile Saturn. <laughs> so it's kind of has a three-way sextile with Saturn at 18. That's actually more significant. So this moon is sextile Saturn opposite Venus, sextile Mars. So, um, and what else? There's, I think that's it. So really, we're thinking about the themes of Venus, which is relationships, the themes of Mars, which is um, energy, conflict, war, personal willpower. Um, so I really think think about the dichotomy between independence and codependence. That is Aries, me, me, me versus Libra, us, us, us it puts more of the focus on the me, 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 because the, the moon is in me, me, me. And anytime a full moon happens in this season, it's like the theme of the season is there. Last season, it was the theme of Virgo, which is all organization. And then for two and a half days, when the full moon happens, you flip that and go opposite. So during Virgo season, we flipped it and went to Pisces, which is not organized. It's not Virgo. It's the opposite of Virgo in a yin and yang way. But in this case, Libra is about beauty, relationships, harmony, aesthetics for the whole chunk of the month. And then for these two and a half days, it becomes the powerful, aggressive Mars energy stuff. So, I mean, this happens every year. Just that a full moon in Libra season is the full moon in Aries. So I'm not saying like this moon in particular is super auspicious, but given all the shit that's going on in the world in the background, given the US Pluto return, given Pluto gestation direct, given we're we're prepping up for a more auspicious lunation, which is a month from now, this also marks a month from the blood moon. That's on election day. So on October 9th, we are a, a one moon, one month away from the blood moon election season. 
So if anything, this is just like a slap in the face. Like we're getting close to the crazy times that us astrologers are talking about. And if you're watching the news, the crazy times are already like developing. It depends on where you are in the world, but things are crazy in the world for many people already. But uh, yeah, think about relationships and think about conflict. Um, try to resolve conflict. Try to try to balance Libra is the scales balancing. Try to balance your in inherent independent nature, which is Aries, the ram, the first day of spring, the first day of the, Z the zodiac, um, the baby of the zodiac. Like, be aware and pay attention to what's coming up. If you're being very self centered, or maybe your partner or someone else is being very self centered, and, and understand the duality between that self centeredness and then the harmony that comes with relationships. Because Venus, the planet of relationships, is right there. Um, and, you know, Moon is in a loose sextile with Mars. It's in a loose sextile with Saturn. And the Moon is in Aries. It's in the fire sign. It's in that jacked up area of the chart. So, um, and like I said, the main thing is this marks that we're we're two weeks away from the first eclipse of Scorpio season. We're basically two weeks away from Scorpio season. So even though the leaves are falling, the pumpkin spice lattes are pouring, people are in cuffing season. People are like thinking about the Libra scales, the relationships. That's all fine and dandy. Keep doing it. But the clock is ticking and shit's going down this election season. Shit's going down this fall. The economy might crash. Just throwing that out there. And just be stoic. Be prepared. Have the foresight. Be like, hey, Dan and all the other good astrologers have been talking about this. Um, and I hope I'm wrong. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe everything will just come right back to normal. Um, I'm not counting on that, though. I've got my... Um, I've got my told you so cap on ready, ready to um, do what you got to do when shit goes down. And I don't know. Uh, who knows? Who knows? The stars are just saying the planets are just saying that we're in the middle of something real serious. And it's really going to take a turn for something quite different in March next year. And between now and then could be dark winter you know um <laughs> so again just to recap this week not the most active week beginning of the week when the moon is in the saturn ruled signs and the mars is still kind of trining saturn be productive be stoic be serious get in prepper mode enjoy the uh the scenery of libra season enjoy the venus themes of libra season this then, you know, later in the week when the moon is in Pisces, you get a time to be chill. You get a time to be more creative. Pluto stations direct. Mercury trines Pluto. Um, think about the mental space of Mercury and the relationship space, of, relationship space of Venus. And then um, full moon in Aries this weekend, you know, get fired up Sunday. It's going to be a high energy, fiery moon related to the planet of war so pay attention to the wars within your own life and the wars that might be happening in the real fucking world too so i'm gonna leave it at that um thanks to everyone who's hanging out in the stream i stream this one a little later than i typically do it's on a sunday um so if you do want to get quality quality premium content like this check out my rockfin um, keep an eye out for my 2023 wall calendar. Like if shit hits the fan and then the, the internet can shut down, at least you'll have this physical resource to know what's going on in astrology. I don't really think the internet's going to get shut down, but you know, I'm just on one this afternoon, but I have been, you know, Mars trying Saturn working very hard to get that out on time. So that's kind of why I haven't been putting interviews out. Um, Leave a review on iTunes or Spotify. That really helps me out. And um, leave a comment on Rockfin, like on Rockfin, 
leave a comment on YouTube, like on YouTube once it's up there. And I hope you all have the best week ever. And I'll talk to you later. Take care.